Dan Kujo, also known as the hero Toku King, was taking a break from his long journey on the hood of a car that he found half buried in the world forest. The Saba Saber floated next to him. They were looking over Dan's newest weapon, the Dino Charge Morpher. Having a ranged weapon in our arsenal has been a big help so far. Agreed, Dan. If only it were in better shape. Without a battery, it's barely able to fire. I believe I might have a solution to that problem. You do? Can you power up this morpher? Sadly, I cannot. I do, however, believe I can locate a component that can do just that. Dan and Saba spent the next several days traveling across the difficult terrain of the world forest. Dan noticed that Saba was taking him closer and closer to water. Dan's feet started to sink into the muddy ground. I sure hope that we get there soon, Saba. If this mud gets much worse, I won't be able to walk, let alone fight if need be. Don't worry, Dan. The stream is just up ahead. The artifact has not awakened yet, so we should not have much competition. Soon Dan could hear the trickle of water straight ahead. Saba led him to a stream with a small waterfall that ran gently downward. In the stream, a green sword stuck hilt first out of the sand. We've found it! The Dino Saber! Another sword? How will this make a blaster stronger? Before Saba could answer him, mud began to shoot up out of the ground. A slimy, webbed hand reached up out of the muddy bank of the stream. Soon enough, an entire creature pulled itself up out of the ground. The gooey, green kaiju stood on the ground with two webbed feet. Its body looked as if it was made of swamp moss, and it had a head resembling a green jellyfish. The oddest feature the monster had, however, were the big white eyes that were now fixed on Dan and Saba. I knew this wouldn't be easy. Toku change! Dan Kujo spun the Toku changer that was firmly attached to his wrist, swiftly transforming him into the mighty Toku King. Toku King summoned the dragon dagger instantly and began to move towards this swamp jelly. Before Toku King could make his move, the tendrils on the creature's head lashed out at him and ripped the dragon dagger from his grasp. The monster then lashed out, knocking Toku King into the mud. The kaiju let out a sound that almost appeared to be laughter, as Toku King staggered to his feet. What are you laughing at? Dan, you must use your ranged weapon. The kaiju will rip any melee weapon away from you once you are close enough. Toku King removed the Dino Charge Morpher from his collection pointed it at Swamp Jelly, and pulled the trigger. Sparks flickered out of the blaster's tip. The morpher was far too old and drained to work on its own anymore. The red battery Toku King used to defeat Cloaked Kaijin had not yet recharged. Luckily, our hero still had the green Velociraptor battery. He loaded it into the morpher and fired. The blasts struck Swamp Jelly in the chest, and sent it sprawling into the mud. Now's your chance, Dan! The sword! You got it! Toku King started to run towards the Dino Saber, but the mud slowed his pace. It got deeper the closer he got to the sword. Suddenly, our hero felt something wrap around his leg. It was one of Swamp Jelly's tendrils. The monster yanked Toku King down into the mud, and began to drag our hero towards his slimy body. Toku King clawed at the mud as more and more of Swamp Jelly's tendrils dragged him closer and closer. Was this the end? Toku King could not see a way out. Mud began to cover up his visor, and he was losing his vision. But Toku King could still see the Dino Saber in the stream. He could also see something white floating towards the sword. It was Saba. What was he doing? Saba didn't have any arms to pull the sword out with. Saba had also lost much of his energy over the years. He couldn't even float and fire his lasers at the same time. Saba sunk his blade into the mud, 
a few feet away from the saber. Prepare yourself, Toku King! Suddenly, Saba fired his lasers at the ground where the dino saber rested. The resulting explosion launched the green and black sword into the air. Toku King reached out his muddy hand and caught the saber just in time. He swung around and slashed Swamp Jelly's tendrils with the sword. The creature screeched in pain as many of its extendable tendrils were severed. It lost its grip on Toku King, and our hero quickly jumped to his feet. Saba, I need to know how to use this thing now. It's simple. Combine the Dino Saber with the Dino Charge Morpher. Combine them? If you say so, Saba. Toku King brought the two weapons close together. The saber buckled and folded into a box at two points. The now collapsed sword attached itself to the barrel of the blaster to form a single cannon from the two weapons. Well, would you look at that? Let's try this thing out. Toku King pointed the cannon at the recovering swamp jelly. As he pulled the trigger... A large blast of energy left the barrel, the force of which made Toku King slide back further into the mud. The large blast landed a direct hit on Swamp Jelly's head, sending gooey viscera flying in all directions. The now headless kaiju fell to the ground in defeat. Toku King lowered his new weapon and wiped the mud from his visor. It was finally done. Another kaiju lay defeated. Saba removed himself from the mud and floated over to Toku King. Fantastic! It seems that the Dino Blade Blaster works like a charm. I'll say, and just in time too. This stream wouldn't happen to lead to a lake or something, would it? I believe there is a pond about a mile from here. Why do you ask? Toku King looked down at his body which was almost completely covered in mud, and then back up to Saba. Ah yes, of course. Perhaps we should get you cleaned up and refill your canteen. I seem to have muddied my blade as well. Saba and Toku King took off to find a place to wash up before they began their next adventure. Toku King was created by Paul Kelly Jr. Starring Paul Kelly Jr., Samson West, and Jesse Booth. Edited by Paul Kelly Jr. Written by Paul Kelly Jr. Executive Producer Chris Winter. Music by Letterbox. Special thanks to Ian McNeil, Cameron Gowen, Eddie Chang, and all our donors and listeners. Please follow the links in the podcast description to donate and support the show.